Hello again and welcome to another edition of Sudden Country. Hi, I'm Herb Sudden. Welcome to the show. I am very happy to say I have epic recording star Tammy Cochran as special guest tonight. Welcome to the show, Tammy. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Okay. I've been doing some research on you and I found out that um, you sing about real things because you're a real person in your songs. Now, what, do, what does it mean you sing about real things and that you're the real person in your songs? Well, I like to try to keep the music on the album um, songs that everybody can relate to, either now, presently, or something that they've gone through. And um, to me, it's just music has always been a healing thing for me. So I think that I try to bring that across on the album so hopefully other people can, can heal with it. I also read that uh, I really like songs that make me feel powerful, something ordinary, ordinary people can relate to. And yeah. That's, that's mm -hmm. true. That's What's exactly mean powerful? True. Powerful and inside powerful. Powerful, yeah, and I, I love to do songs about you know whether you've been hurt or um, anything like that. You know, there's always something good that comes from everything that happens, and so being a woman, I like you know empowering songs. Your life uh, story is remarkable. I've been reading about it with determination and the ability to triumph over tragedy and personal disappointment. You want to elaborate a little bit on that? Well. Um, I think that all of us have gone through things that, you know, when life throws us a curveball, we have to adapt and deal with it. And I think that um, I've been through a, a divorce and I've had um, my brothers pass away with cystic fibrosis. And, um, you know, those are just a few things that, that make you who you are as a person, I think. Um, it says you've been through the school of hard knocks. Is that a true yeah, statement? I Been guess, there, done that I before, right? I guess so. <laughs> okay. How about we talk about Angels in Waiting before we show it? Okay. Well, Angels in Waiting is a song that I co-wrote with Jim McBride and Stuart Harris. And this is a song about my brothers, Alan and Sean, who passed away with cystic right. fibrosis. So um, this song was really supposed to be a tribute and kind of a celebration of their life. So in the video, we included lots of home footage that my parents took when we were just kids those little eight millimeter uh, cameras and so I think that the video really really captured who my brothers were and um, really celebrated their life I just want to make mention right now that I just looked in the country weekly that's my source for a lot of information yes. that angel in waiting is a top 10 song and a video is a top 10 video Yes, and I'm, I'm really, really happy because it's, it's a way of, of letting my brothers live on forever and um, letting all of you know who they are. Both your parents must be country music fans because they, they moved to Nashville with you back in 1991, huh? They did. Yeah, they gave me the choice of either going to Nashville or going to college. Oh, okay. And I, you know, really wasn't the brightest cookie. Uh -oh. So I chose Nashville in a heartbeat, so they sold everything they had, and, and we all moved to Nashville. That's incredible. They backed you up all the way, huh? Yeah. How did it... When you got to Nashville, how did they treat you the first five or six years that you were there? Uh, what well, did you do there besides you getting married? <laughs> <laughs> what did I do there besides getting married? <laughs> well, I, I worked a lot of part-time jobs. Did you? I worked at McDonald's, it's true. And uh, worked at service merchandise selling jewelry. And um, did a lot of demo work and, and trying to network and meet the sure. right people. And um, just kind of spun my wheels until one day it, it happened and I met Blake Chansey. Yep. And, and the rest is history. And you went to some riders nights and you did all the whole usual scene that all the you bet I Nashville did. wannabes that want to be the somebody and here you are now. That's right. Epic you gotta recording do this. star. Why don't we talk about so what? Well, so what? Um, this video was so much fun to make. We we made this video way out in the boonies of Tennessee at this all night drive in and um, it was actually a working drive in. And we started shooting this video at about five o'clock in the evening and didn't finish till about seven o'clock in the morning. So it was it was so much fun because it's it's kind of like real life when you look back on your past. And on the big screen on the movie theater is all the things that happened to you in your past. And it's it's amazing how everything is put in perspective when you're an outside person looking in and thinking, oh my gosh, I can't believe I put up with that or did that or whatever. <laughs> so okay. I thought that was kind of cool idea. That's a real personalized video. It says when you were in Nashville, you held industry showcases. How did you arrange to hold industry showcases later on in your career there before you? Well, um, what you do is, is you, you find a, a venue, a club of some sort, and send out invitations and, and um, try to get people to show up to see you sing. Um, it's actually a pretty um, 
normal occurrence. Is it? Yeah, a lot I of never, people do that, yeah. I never heard the term industry showcases. Mm -hmm. I see, I heard record labels have showcases. You know, the Bluebird does, you know, Riders sure. Night and all that. But I never heard of an individual. That's why I asked you that question. How did it come about? Oh, by the way, I also read that you've been compared to Connie Smith and Tammy Wynette. Oh, Ooh, boy, yeah, I'll I love tell you. That. I know. Great. That is. <laughs> Also, I was glancing through your bio and said your voice needs no artificial enhancement. What's that mean when you're in the studio? You just said well, no. You're not manufactured. Well, I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of tools are and uh, gadgets in the studio that can make you sound better than what you actually are, and um, and uh, they're used all the time. And um, you know, I think that's what they're referring to there. Okay, because I never was in the studio to say anything, but but they enhance your voice a lot. They change your voice a lot in the studio. So, well, they didn't really with me. I, mean, I, I didn't. Um, there's a, a a piece called the Pro Tools, which kind of make your pitch if you're under or over, kind of get on the mark there. But um, actually, my producers just didn't want me to use it, and they didn't let me. But you know, I spent a little bit longer in there than I probably should have. But that's okay. At least it's me. That's you. <laughs> your song, if you can. Had you compared to Linda Ronstadt's long, long time? How, how, what does it compared you to Linda Ronstadt? That's quite an accomplishment. It is, it, and I've never really never understood that? that comparison. Why? I don't know. I guess mm -hmm. I just never, I never, you know, really thought of it that way. But um, if you can was a song that that I found back in 1995 before I had a record deal, and uh, I just loved that song so much that when I got my record deal finally three years later. Um, I took this song to them. This is actually the song that that got me the record deal, and wow. and uh, we shot this video in New York City in the Warwick Hotel, and um, it was my first video. I was a little nervous. You you were a presenter at the CMA show this year. How did I was. that feel? Oh my gosh! Well, you know, I've watched the CMA awards my whole life, and just to be a part of it was a thrill. I mean, oh, with you know, so many of of the people that I've admired for years being there and sitting in the front row, it was it was kind of nerve wracking, but it was really exciting. Tell us about the CCMA. The CCMA is uh, the the Country Christian Music Awards, uh, which I was nominated for uh, for Angels in Waiting for that video. And Billboard did the same. Billboard Music Awards, um, two nominations for the same song and same video. How about the national anthem for the Davis Cup? That had to be an wow. honor. Wow! Yeah, and um, it was the first time I'd ever sang the national anthem. Let oh me tell gosh. you, I was scared to death. Um, not only was it the first time I sang it, but it was on national TV on ESPN. And oh boy, you talk about being nervous. Butterflies all the way. Oh, all over the place. <laughs> That was broadcast live in to a hundred million people. Whoa! Yeah, that didn't help. <laughs> no, no, just knowing that. Not too many country songs have a cello in them. What, you put a cello in a song, huh? Yeah, there's there's this beautiful song on the album called "What I Learned from Loving You," and um, it's just a really, really sweet song with a really a deep meaning. And um, we wanted to make it different and make it kind of special. And you never really hear country songs with a cello. So no, we thought, so. well, what the heck, we'll just throw that in there. Okay. Now, go back a few years with you. How about your concerts in the bedroom? Your first paying job? Oh. Oh, yes. Yeah, when I was eight years old. Yeah. Um, for Christmas, I got this Raggedy Ann and Andy record player that had a built-in microphone. And um, I got a couple albums that went along with it that year, Barbara Mandrell and Loretta Lynn. And I would sing those those songs, every song on the album, yeah. and just oh, all the time. And then my brothers would charge my parents like 50 cents <laughs> to get in the room to, to hear me sing a fun little show. And first paid job, huh? Yeah. First paid job was, uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that I guess it. you could you consider that the first, that paid, first job. paid job. Yeah, I didn't, get, I didn't see very much of that money. <laughs> Somewhere it got derailed, huh? Somewhere, you know. Some, How about the $20 too? for the chicken barbecue? The, uh, uh, bar oh, ox roast. yes. Yeah. Now, oh, that was just a turning point in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that would be one of them, huh? <laughs> yeah, um, there was $20. This, $20, can you believe that? Yeah, and, a, and a sandwich. That's some big corn for a 12-year-old, let me tell you. It was a talent <laughs> contest down at this uh, Harper's Field Ox Roast, which is a tiny little town in Ohio near where I grew up, and um, won the talent contest with 20 bucks and a barbecue ox roast sandwich. How about the Totally Cool Band? <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Remember those yeah, days? Yeah, that, that was probably the first band that I actually... Um, was band leader and owned the equipment and 
we didn't really have a name for the band before we had our first job, so we just kind of named it. Uh, we named it TC Country, which I hated and still hate to this day. And um, so we always thought we'd go back and change the name. And it didn't stick because everyone started going, you know, started wanting to book TC Country. And right. they didn't get the fact that we were the same band with a different name. So we had to keep it. Who'd you open for so far in your career? Oh, wow. Um, Tanya Tucker, um, Billy Crash Craddock, um, uh, Shelley Wright, Tim Rushlow, okay. Lone yeah. Star. It's, yeah. it's getting bigger, yeah, bigger every day. Every, yeah. day. every time you go on stage, there's somebody else there That's to, right. you can add to the list. What was the worst job you ever had before singing? What was the worst job that you ever... The worst non-musical yeah, job? Yeah, non-musical. Hmm. Well, I don't know if it was the worst job, but... Um, I was a telemarketer. You were on I'm, the telephone? Uh-huh, and I'm Ooh. sure that I probably called you during dinner. Probably. Um, yeah, I was selling um, portraits for Olin Mills Portrait Studio. And, um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't a bad job. It was just that people hung up on you all the time. <laughs> they didn't know they were, how lucky they were to talk to you, huh? <laughs> That's right. who would your, who would your, who would your Who would be your favorite duet partner if you had to choose one today? Oh, gosh, that is so hard because, I mean, I just, there's so many people out there that I admire so much. Um, I would love to sing a song with Ray Price. I grew wow. up. I grew up listening to him. Yeah, hard to find a number. Yeah, I grew up listening to him, and he's just got a great voice. And I think um, he's just—he's an icon. He's a legend, he and I would love to perform with him. He's quite a guy. He's up there in years too. He's mm -hmm. seventy-four or something. Still sounds like great. Still sounds great. Exactly. What's the one thing you'd want never leave home without? One thing I never mm, leave, leave home, home without: without. Uh, money. No, there you go. That <laughs> work. Know. How about your website? Um, you, the website that's up and running right now is under sonymusic.com, okay. and uh, we've got tammycochran.com in construction, so it should be up soon. Okay. Well, it's time to wrap this uh, enjoyable interview up with you. We're going to wrap it up with uh, I Cry. Tell us about it. It was shot in L.A., was it? Yes. Uh, we shot that in, uh, in Los Angeles, and um, we shot it in a place called the Beauty Bar. Okay. Which is a, a bar that you go and have cocktails, but on the other side of the bar, there's also a place where you can get your hair done and get your nails done. Get out, and yeah, they have that. Huh? Yeah, it it was it's like this really hip kind of bar, and then part of it, um, we shot other half of it in the shoe bar, which is the same kind of deal. You go in there and you shop for shoes, and there's also a bar. So we thought, well, you know what, a, what a neat concept because the song is kind of a sad song. But we made it more of an empowering song, like, yeah, I cry, but I'm, go I'm getting dressed up, and I'm going out with my friends, and I'm going to have a good time, and I'll just worry about you tomorrow. Well, we're going to wrap up with Tammy Cochran. Thank you very much for Thank being you. on the show. Appreciate it. My pleasure. It. Thank you. Yeah.